Good evening to those that are joining us online. Appreciate you being with us tonight and hope that you're blessed and well. And uh, tonight we're going to go ahead and we want to pray a special blessing over our community, over our state, our country, um, and uh, everything that's going on in the, really on the south. The whole country is dealing with, with pretty severe winter. Oh, we're on the back side of it. We're doing good. Um, you know, warmed up all the way to 20 today and uh, it's going to be in the 40s next week. But, you know, that's, that usually you wouldn't think all the way to 20, but when you've been below zero for almost a week, 20 is a wonderful spring day to me. Uh, but enjoyed it. But uh, Texas, where our kids live, Brittany and Devin, and uh, the most uh, two of the greatest children in the world, Lillian Jameson, they've been dealing with the rolling blackouts. They're dealing with issues there uh, throughout the whole state of Texas, as well as Arkansas and across the whole South. So uh, they're in the middle of this. They're in the middle of the storm now and dealing with it. So we want to pray specially for them tonight, and just ask God to bless and be with us. And if you have a need to share, please share it there in the comments that you have on the page. And uh, let us know what we can pray for you tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you bless and touch uh, Brown County, Kansas. And Lord, we pray for the state of Kansas and for this country. Lord God, that you'll bless our president and the leadership of our nation. And that you'll bless his, his vice president, his cabinet. Lord, all those that are making decisions in Congress. Father, we pray your blessings, Lord, tonight over the states across the, the south that are being hit with this weather they're just not used to. Lord, we're here, you know, we've been here seven years. And now we've experienced real winter again. And. Lord, we, we can handle it, we can live with it, this is just, it's just part of living in Kansas, but Texas is not made for this, and Lord, we pray blessings over the leadership, blessings, Lord God, over those that are making decisions, and Lord, safety and protection over those that are dealing with uh, very cold temperatures, and dealing with things on the highways, and dealing, Lord, with power outages, and bless them, and be with them, Lord God, and their friends across Arkansas, and throughout that part of the country, as they deal with this winter storm, and as it hits them, and and as they, uh, they are affected by it. We pray your blessing over the time we spend together in your word tonight. Touch us by it, encourage us by it, and let your Holy Spirit guide and strengthen us. And we honor and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. We are continuing on our study of the book of Revelations, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We're on about lesson 52. If I'm doing my, got things settled in my mind right, and tonight we're going to be in Revelation chapter 6. And we're going to start talking tonight about the four horsemen of the apocalypse and the four horsemen of the apocalypse is is a a uh, I think an interesting discussion we'll have tonight and I certainly encourage discussion if you have uh, have something you want to say or input you want to add please do so uh, those that are watching online uh, I kind of got it where I can see it I may not catch it automatically but um, I do have it where I can see if you make a make a comment or what have you there but uh, tonight as we as we get into our study you know remember we've been we've been through the first three chapters that give us all the stuff that Jesus had to say to those seven churches and essentially any church and I do and I do see uh, a lot of that is is a shoe fits wear it kind of kind of message because if as a believer in Jesus Christ you fit the bill of one of the churches that didn't get didn't get have any uh, condemnation didn't have any issues or if you're one of those that you're dealing with those doctrinal issues you're dealing with those you know whatever it may be um, bottom line, when you come back to it, is is keep up the good work, and the, who, those who overcome will, you know, they'll they'll reap these benefits and have this have this eternal reward and what have you there that that he that he offers. So tonight we're going to look at at the first uh, first of the four seals that are that are broken here by the Lord Jesus. And remember, from two weeks ago, we talked about the um, you know how John John gets caught up, and that's an image of the of the rapture. He gets he so come up here so he goes up and he's in the spirit and again he's in the spirit realm uh, is he physically there and I, and I think we answered this as a matter of fact the question was asked but but is he in the spirit realm is he there is you know what exactly is going on we honestly I don't know that there's actually a good answer for that I thought about it after we left that night I thought you know there's just not a perfect answer for this because. We only know of John being the only one that had this experience. Was he there in the flesh? Was he there in spirit? Was he there just was this just a vision in his mind? Um, all of that, all those are good questions that, that we don't fully have the answer to. Bottom line is, God had a message to give John to give to the world, and that's what John did: the revelation of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is revealed here as the Lamb of God. He's revealed as as you know king of kings lord of lords and all the things that we'll see here and i want to kind of keep that 
as we approach these things where Jesus is revealed in a particular way, I want to kind of—I I do want to kind of hope I'll remember to do it each time it happens. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, and the revelation of Him as Lamb of God, King of Kings, Lion of the Tribe of Judah, and all those things. And really, just in the first the first three chapters, we covered a lot of that because what he said at the start of each one of those, each each one of those letters or, or each one of those addresses to those churches, that I am the one who is in the midst of the golden lampstands. I am the one who you know, and and fill in the blank with all of those, and he reveals himself as you know the one and the one in different scenarios different situations and it's it's really a beautiful thing so here we are at this point where we're at in chapter six you have the the rapture has happened and now the tribulation is beginning and we talked last week in pretty good detail last week week before last week about about how you had um all the all the stuff going on you have who's going to come against israel because because the world's going to come against israel now how's that going to manifest don't know um the idea there's several ideas there that the arab nations are going to be part of it regardless but it's going to be a coming together of maybe russia and and the arab nations it may be china and the arab nation maybe china and russia it may be the united states and the arab nations we don't know but somebody's going to do it and the end the end result will be either at the start of the tribulation or right into, you know, somewhere in that early part that's going to usher in these events, you will have a peace treaty signed between Israel and the world. And then all these things are going to happen. And a lot of that stuff, you know, he's talking about your one, one world government, one world money, one world church, all of those things will unfold. And the, the, the thing about it is that when you come back to it is that you have, you have a world that up until I think until recent history 20 years ago you didn't have a world that was set for a one world leader or one world currency one world government um, I do think after we talked about it last time that some of this Bitcoin stuff that's perfect that is a perfect scenario um, for for what they want to do now I'll give you some say and I and I find this stuff funny because people some of these these either preacher preacher facebook pages i'm on or just christians in general facebook pages i'm that i've got into most all of them are assembly god connected but some of these people start in on this stuff about about the microchips and about this and about that and about something else and i'm like i'm just like here's the thing me <laughs> i don't have told you this but if i did just overlook me because i I'm, I'm starting to repeat myself a lot more than i used to but <laughs> anyway they, I, I'm, I'm on a I'm on a committee at the, the hospital, and um, it's a patient family thing anyway. But we were talking about the vaccine, and uh, Miss Abeda, the the pharmacist, she draws up every single every single dose. There's ten doses in a vial. She draws them all up, has them all ready to go, and then wherever they do them over at the, which Fisher Centers where we did ours, whatever wherever they're wherever they're doing it, they make sure everything's there and everything's in order. And they've actually had people ask them, what about the microchip? That they've been told there's a microchip going to be in the shot. And you're, gonna micro, you're getting a microchip when you do that. Well, there's no way to do that because she's not sitting there with some kind of little, little eyeglass thing or whatever, making sure she pulls a, a, one microchip per dose. And I, I, of course, I looked over at the lady who was teasing. I said, so it's possible that when I got my first shot, I got like eight or nine of them, right? And she laughed, which I was kidding. I was totally kidding about it. I don't think they're microchipping you. And all that stuff. And what if they? Here, here's the thing. Here's my thing right here. What if they do? So what? The mark of the beast. This, this, this is where it comes back to. Oh, the mark of the beast. They're, it's going to be a microchip. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. It's going to be. I tell you what. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to look a lot like that right there. And you know what they've started putting in your card now? And everybody's got one. I bet by now. A microchip. And you stick that in there, and Walmart tells you that you got money, and they're going to take your money so that you can buy your milk and your milk and bread forehead hand right but but with the technology is there where they can take that little bitty chip and sell that whole card and stick that in the back of your hand stick that on your forehead or whatever and you go on but let me come back to where i'm going with this because this is this is a very important distinction about this subject the mark of the beast whatever it turns out to be will be your choice you will choose it nobody's going to force this on you nobody's going to Nobody's going to stick it under your skin without your approval. You have to, you have to willingly accept that, 
and I'll go so far to say, and I do agree with this, this one, of the, one of the aspects of the Left Behind series, and again, it's, it's fictional based on Scripture and based on what Lahey and Jenkins thought, but there is a scenario there in the storyline where this young man says, I don't want it, I'm not having it. His dad says, yes, you are, and they, they sedate him, give him the mark, and he, and, but he's okay. He didn't accept the mark. He was, he was forced, the mark was forced on him. So essentially, in a manner of speaking, the mark didn't take. I think that's 100% true. I absolutely agree with that. You know, let's, let's just throw a scenario. We, let's, we, let's use Carly and Lori here. That's a similar thing. If Carly says, no, I'm not, and Lori says, yes, you are, because we're going to, you know, we got to have, we got to have, we got to pay our bills, we got to have this, got that. You know, we're going to do Of course, y'all aren't going to be here, by the way. Let's just be clear on that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> just, let's just, I'm not saying y'all going to miss the rapture. Not at all. Wouldn't do that to you. Wouldn't claim that. But, you know, if just because you're her mother, you can't make her take that. Besides the fact she's of age, but what if she was 12? What if she's 10? She still has to say, yes, I want it, or no, I don't. And now the consequences for no, I don't will be severe, will be death probably, um, or severe torture until you're willing to take it or until they torture you to death, one or the other. But all of that, you know, all the stuff about microchips and all the stuff that they're throwing out there, it's like, did y'all forget that you choose the mark or you reject the mark? And number one, when does this occur? During the tribulation. Do you think we're in the tribulation? Based on what's going on around now. I'm kidding. I, 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 I'm not, I don't think we're anywhere close to tribulation. I think, I think these are, this, is a, this is a day in the park compared to the tribulation. In every way you want to talk about, whether you want to talk about politics, whether you want to talk about culture, if you want to talk about the stinking weather we're going through right now. None of this, none of this is even close to what the, what the, the tribulation is going to be like. And don't forget, now, if what we believe in the pre-tribulation rapture is true, and we feel pretty confident that it is, it is the most likely scenario of the pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib. It's the most likely scenario. But here's the thing that, um, that, we, that we need to get, that if, regardless of, of what the mark of the beast is, it's going to come after the rapture of the church, which the tribulation will not start until that point at some point, but don't forget, now we're talking chaos. I want you to go back, chaos. Think about what this world's going to be like when the church is carried out of here. It's going to be a bedlam. If there's all these things are going to occur, so the rapture happens, we all disappear, whether we're driving down the highway, riding an airplane, flying an airplane, driving a, driving a bulldozer, whatever. I mean, all, all, you know, this is, these are scenarios that you can think about. All of these things are going to, you know, People are just going to disappear. The, the whole world's going to be trying to figure out what happened to these people. And they'll have every excuse from aliens to spontaneous combustion to some, you know, COVID. Or, you know, this, the pandemic's hit again. And now there's not only, they, they, we didn't just, they didn't just die, they just disappeared. I don't care what they say. Don't matter to me. You can say I burned up. And you say whatever, what you, whatever you say the aliens come and got me. Uh, I'm an alien in this world as it is. So that don't stress me at all. But, you know, all of these, so you're going to deal with the chaos of that. In the midst of that, here comes the Antichrist. Well, for the good of the world, I'll step into this role. I really don't know that I'm qualified. I really, you know, and the whole time, behind the scenes, he is turning every, turning every screw, pushing every button, making everything happen that's going to happen. Now, we're going to start talking about him here just in a second. But all of that, so you got this chaos of, a, of millions of people disappearing, and then you have trying to figure out how, what to do about that. Well, now then you've got, you've got the mess to clean up from that where there's going to be wrecks and there's going to be stuff. There. I mean, it's, all this stuff's going to happen. And then, you know, the chaos in the world and the trouble in the world, and then what happens here? The first seal is opened. So let's read about the first seal. Let's talk about the first seal tonight as we go through. We should get through. I plan on getting through four of these because there's four horsemen, and that's just a nice set, nice set of horses to talk about. So he said, Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures with a loud voice, excuse me, with a voice like thunder, come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he, was, he went out conquering and to conquer. Okay, so there is a discussion here about who the first horseman is. There's even a few Bible scholars that will look at that and tell you that is Jesus. I don't buy that. I don't believe that. I don't think that's true. The first horseman is the Antichrist. Plain and simple. He's a conqueror. He's going out to conquering and to conquer. He's going to come in 
and I do agree there's, there's various, various thoughts on it. Some people think the Antichrist will be a political guy. Some people think he'll be a military guy. I think he's going to be a combination of about everything. I think he'll bring everything to the table. I think he will come in with a political mind, a military mind, a social justice mind, religious mind. This guy is going to be, for lack of a better phrase, well-rounded. He will have every sphere of influence. You know, the, in the, the, the church here back in, Bill Bright back in the 70s started his seven spheres. And it was education, it's religion, it's culture, it's, it's all these, I have them all at the top of my head here, but, but all of these things that, that the church should be influencing, right? And I guarantee you, the Antichrist, when he shows up, he will be well-rounded. He will know everything about everything. He'll have an answer for everything. And, and that's going to be the thing. He's going to come in, and they're going to have this chaos, this problem. And he's going to say, well, what if we did this? Well, let's try that, and it works. And, well, what about this? Well, okay, let's see, you know, what do you think about this idea? Well, let's try that, and it works. And that's going to be, those kind of things is going to be, well, why is he not running the show? Because he obviously has all the answers. That's the kind of stuff. And conquering, when you think about conquering now, we, our first thought is conquering like war, warrior, that kind of thing. But don't, if you'll indulge me here, and I, and, I, and I think I'm going somewhere good with this, or good good line of thinking with it, conquering isn't necessarily overrunning. Conquering may be conquering the mind, the thoughts, the, the culture, the, the, all these things. It's not necessarily coming in and, and we're, bringing in, we're bringing in the hammer and we're just going to start finding nails. It, it's going to be winning hearts and minds. It's going to be conquering whatever, whatever obstacles are there. Because conquering isn't necessarily tearing something up. Conquering can easily be, I believe, can easily be thought of as overcoming a obstacle, an overcoming problem. So that's why that's why I agree with with the majority of Bible scholars who look at the first this first horseman definitely as a picture of man's inhumanity to man. Okay, that's that's a phrase that, that Jenkins uses in his book. And this is this has to do with the, the things that are going on in mankind's world, and what causes suffering. Well, in this world right now, in the in the opinion of the world, not, I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about the, the world itself. You know, there is the inhuma, inhumanity of justice system that is very unfair. There's inhumanity of racism. There's inhumanity of cultural issues. There's inhumanity of of politics, of governments. So. Imagine a guy coming in, as I said a while ago, he's coming in to conquer, a conquering and to conquer. He's going to take care of hunger. He's going to take care of social injustices. He's going to take care of racism. He's going to take care, I mean, what are, you name it. Throw any, anything that this world fights and deals and, and struggles with, you know, a war. There's, there, say there's, right now in the world you've got the Afghanistan issue. Um, you've got that going on. Well, what are you going to do about that? Well, he's going to fix Afghanistan. He's going to take, you know, the, the in, in Iraq, you've got the Kurds, and you've got the Iraqis, and you've got Iran causing trouble, and you've got all these different people. He's going to fix that. He's going to fix all these things. He's going to conquer mankind's troubles. He's going to conquer mankind's issues. So that's why, when you look at this guy, he's going to bring, he's going to bring in the idea of peace, and he's going to bring peace by conquering. There will be war. There will be famines. There will be death. All of this stuff we're about to talk about here in the course of these four horsemen. Because like, like a lot of things you find in Scripture, one thing leads to the next thing, leads to the next thing, leads to the next thing. And the four horsemen definitely accomplish that and give us that, that, uh, that understanding. So, so the Antichrist himself is going to show up. And down through history, we talked about this a little bit last week. You've had Napoleon. You've had Alexander the Great. You've had Hitler. You've had some other world leaders, if you use that phrase, um, that came in and their whole existence was about conquering. Their whole existence was about, was about doing things, about making sure that they exerted their influence on the world, right, in, in, in a way. And this guy has a bow in his hand, which, talk, which does suggest warfare, but no arrow. So what's, what's that bring us to? Diplomacy. I have a bow. I know how to use the bow. But I don't want to have to use an arrow, but I will. It's that kind of, that's, it's that, that's the kind of thinking you get. So what do we have? We have a false peace. 
and this guy's going to come in, he's going to solve all the world's problems. Like I said, he's going to solve hunger, he's going to solve racism, he's going to help them figure out how to use wind turbines and, and solar panels, and I'm sorry, that's, that's, I, that's, I crossed the line, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> you know, even if they're frozen, he's gonna, he's gonna, he'll have some kind of natural way to unthaw them so you don't have to fly helicopters and shoot stuff on them like they're doing in Texas and anyway. Um, I still don't understand. I, nobody's explained to me yet. I can't get anybody to answer the question, including our, our senators and one representative. Um, I've asked the question, can you tell me what a green military looks like? Can you tell me what a green Air Force One looks like? Can you tell me what a green school? Do you realize that if our schools bought 10 buses, which is what it would take for us to continue to operate the way we're operating, and the um, charging stations and have everything like we need to have it and have other schools to charging stations so if we drive to a trip we have we can charge while we're there all of that would cost somewhere between five and ten million dollars right off the top does USD 415 have ten million dollars just laying around no we don't it's not feasible and it doesn't even make sense but here's what I'm telling you and I, I say I'm not saying that to be political I'm not saying that to make a point on that I'm making a point on this the Antichrist is going to step up and say absolutely we can do that here's the money now they're going to have money come from somewhere. Um, they're going to solve some. They're going to have some major scientific breakthrough. They're going to cure cancer. They're going to do something, and the money from that's going to fund anything and everything they want to do. And you know, like I say, he's going to be a problem solver. And all the while, while he's solving problems, he is building up his storehouse of influence, of power, of everything. You know, world peace. This has been a goal forever. You know, we want no nukes and this and that, and you know, we, want to have, we want to have a peaceful world. And we've not had a peaceful world, but about 300 years out of all the years of world history that's recorded. We talk about that usually around uh, Veterans Day or, or one of those. But here's, here's the thing about it. He is going to take, and he is going to get the whole world to just say, we'll fight for you, we'll fight with you. We'll give you our weapons, we'll give you our armies, we'll just let you, we'll let you just do it all. And he'll have generals, he'll have all the people down the line, he'll have all the stuff laid out. And it's going to be a, it's going to be in the mind of those that are left behind, and I'll use that phrase often because I lied, it just works. In the mind of those left behind, he is their savior. He will appear as Messiah. We know that because that, that's, how, that's how he's going to get to the point where, um, where he is going to have the following religiously and socially and politically that he's going to need to have to do everything that he has to do. So, you know, we're living in a world today, but you've got the United Nations, you've got NATO, um, a few other, few other organizations that, that exist in the world. Those are all precursors to get us to the point where the world is amenable to say, okay, we'll follow whatever you say. If it's for the good of the world, we're on board. If it's for the good of the world, here's our nuclear weapons. If it's for the good of the world, here's our, here's our entire um, fleet of uh, fighter jets. Whatever, whatever you need, we're at your disposal. Here's the jets, here's the pilots, here's the crews, here's everything you need. It's, it's all yours. That's the kind of stuff that you're talking about. So, so everything he wants to do will seem like the thing to do. Conquering and to conquer. So he's going to have the answers. He's going to have everything he needs to have, and he's going to do everything that needs to be done. Now, Ezekiel, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to dig into this in detail, but Ezekiel talks about what most Bible scholars do believe will be Russia, and Russia will, I'm not talking to you, Russia will come into the situation, and they will, they will wind, up, uh, wind up in, a, in, a, in destruction. They will wind up no longer being a world power, which is perfect because there will be no world power left. There will be not there. It will be the Antichrist. He will be running everything. You won't have uh, you won't have this. So so part of what you have. We'll get into this later uh, because we do actually see in Revelation where they actually say, well, you had this these images, the imagery that you have. We're not there yet, but you will have a world where each of the United States, Russia, China, so on and so forth, Europe, whatever, will be one of these kingdoms that the Antichrist will rule over, and he'll have a, a governor, essentially, that will rule over North America. You'll have one over South America. You'll have one over China, over whatever, all that kind of stuff. Those are all things that that really, again, don't matter to us because we're not going to be here. It's not, it's gonna be my, not going to be my problem. It's interesting stuff to talk about, I think, but 
uh, it's not going to be an issue for me or you because the rapture of the church is going to take place and then he's going to rise to power. Now the question is asked, will we know him? Will we know who he is? Can we look at the situation and say, well, I think that guy could be a good one. Don't know. I don't, think, I don't know that we will know, but how many people have you heard in our lifetime that some preacher gets up and says, I think it's that guy. I love John Hagee. But I promise you, if you'd put John Hagee on a lie detector machine uh, in the 90s and ask him, do you think Bill Clinton is the Antichrist? And he said, yes, I promise you. And he had said, yes, he's telling the truth. Because he believed it. So the thing about a lie detector, it's, it's not a question of whether it's a lie. It's a question, do you really believe what you're saying? And that's where some people don't, don't quite get that about a lie detector. It's why they've changed it where you can't use it in a court, uh, actually, for real evidence. Because if you actually believe it, whether it's true or not, if you actually believe it, it's going to show that you're telling the truth. And, uh, you know, and like I said, I love John Hagee, and I respect him, and I respect what he had to say, but I promise you, he, was, he'd, he'd, he would have laid his life on the line to tell you it was Bill Clinton. And it wasn't. It's not. There's people that's tried to claim it was Obama. There's people, that, different ones. And it may be an American because we are such a melting pot. I talked about that a little bit last week. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me who it is, where he's from, who he is. I say he won't be my problem, I don't believe, because I think we'll be out of here before he is anybody's problem. That's, that's a good point. My wife, because you can't hear what she said, um, you know, no man knows the hour or the day, so for us to think we know who the Antichrist is, well, that's saying, okay, well, sometime the next X number of years in that man's lifetime, he, then the rapture is bound to happen here. We've got to be ready. That's what we've got to be. That's, that's the only thing Jesus ever said we're supposed to do is be ready to go. So, um, so, the, so the white horse with this conquering, conquering rider, this is the Antichrist. This is where he rises to power. And he's going to rule over this world, uh, one man, one power, one government, and everybody's going to fall right in line. Now, it's not going to be simple. It's going to be messy. It is going to be, it's going to be ugly. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be tough because let's just, let's just go ahead and throw the scenario in there. What if the United States says, I don't think so. We're, we're good. We don't need you. What's going to happen? They're going to attack us. They're, we're going to submit conquering and to conquer. He will conquer the United States of America. He will conquer China. He will conquer everybody. And we will all, everybody will be under the rule and reign of the Antichrist on this earth. And there will not be any, we don't want that, we're good, you go ahead. He will be in charge. He will run the show. And, essentially, and when it comes down to it, everybody, every country in the world will say, please help us. Please take care of us. Please provide for our people. Please do all these things, and they will be begging him to do this, and he will do it because what's well, for the good of the world? And he'll do. Yeah, Israel will not. Israel will not be under. They'll be. They'll be on their own, which that's that's part of the whole plan anyway. All right, thoughts or questions before I go on? Anybody got anything? All right, let's go to the next horse here. Uh, starting in the, the gate number two here. When when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, "Come and see." Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And that people should be, I'm sorry, that people should kill one another. And there's, there was a great, why can't I read that? There was given to him a great sword. Okay. So what did I say a while ago at the outset? We have first horse, the second horse, the third horse, the fourth horse. All of these are connected. All of these work, all these work essentially together in a manner of speaking. So, so here comes this next horse. And this is a symbol of war. This is the war I was talking about a while ago. This is, he has the ability to take peace from the earth and make men slay each other, it says there. So he's given the sword and the Antichrist and his, and his ability to take over the world, war is going to be a part of that. And he will conquer, he's conquering, will conquer. And whatever, whatever comes, whatever happens, whatever resistance is there, the second rider is there to take care of. He's there to do the bidding of the Antichrist, and he will, he will do that. And there will be nations who don't want to be, who don't want to be part of the, the group. They don't want to be part of the world system. Maybe they still like Israel. Maybe they're still, because in this world, I just don't know that you'll ever have every nation in the world totally flat out say Israel's evil and horrible and we are against them. But you will have those sympathizers, and this is where the horse comes in. You know, this is where this horse comes in, because he's going to take peace from the earth, and... 
whenever they start rebelling against what the Antichrist is trying to do, he'll come in and he'll take care of it. He, yeah, it's the same. Like I say it's the same with us. China and Russia will not willingly just bow down and give in, and neither will we. Uh, lots of the countries in South America, they're very prideful, very arrogant, even in some cases, and they're you know they're not going to want to just just cater to everything. Communist countries aren't going to want to just jump up and say, sure, why not? Let's just go. They're not going to do that. So there will have to be a conquering, and there will have to be war, and there will have to be this this horse that comes in, as we said, the rider comes in, the great sword, and he's he's taking peace from the earth, and he will do, he'll do whatever he has to do to meet. Now, I want you to watch this now again. This is where it gets tough, and this is where it bothers people, and I, and I understand why. This all is God's plan. This is the way God set this up. So all this death, all of this trouble, all of this misery, all of these people going through what they're going through. And before we get finished, before we get through the end of this book, end of, end of, end of Revelation, we're going to talk about horrible suffering. We're going to talk about people going through things. And some of it, we'll just have to say, well, they're, I don't understand. I've never seen a horse with a, a, a snake head, a snake tail. Thank you, Jesus, for that, that we don't have those now. Um, you know, that's, that's about the only thing Australia don't have. You know, Australia's got, on that little Australian continent, they got like the like eight of the ten most deadly things on this planet. They're like, I want to visit Australia, but sometimes I'm like, well, what, I want, what am I going for? What do I want to do that? But um, in all seriousness, you've got, you've got a, a, some, some things that are going to be here, supernatural things that are going to be on this planet that's like, Wow. I just can't imagine. I can't imagine what they're going to experience and what they're going to go through. Uh. I just want to know, in my uh, New King James Version, it says, It was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. So, do you think there will be conflict between people? I mean... That, that nations will go at war with each other, mm -hmm. but then this horseman or whatever is also going to be killing too? It will be man against man, and whatever, whoever's not submitted themselves to the will of the Antichrist, they'll, they'll be forced by, by this horseman to, to submit. That's, that's what we make out of that. That's where we get that, you know, that... that People are going to fuss with each other and hate each other and slay each other and whatever they don't do, we'll give them a little push. We'll give them a little, we'll, we'll, we'll egg them on. And that's, you know, he's a divider. This this rider is a divider. I'm not trying to be poetic there at all. That's just a coincidence. It really was. But, but this rider will be a divider. He will bring, he will bring war and he will bring hatred and he will bring all of these things. And again, Go back again and remember, the Antichrist is coming in. He's going to be solving all of this. So when you have a nation that has this fuss going on, that the, that the rider of, the, of the, uh, the red horse causes, well, then here comes the Antichrist. Hey, fellas, why don't, well, let's, let's get along with each other. Let's sign this peace treaty. Let's get along with one another. Let's come together here for the good of the world. And all of us going to join hands and sing kumbaya. That's the kind of thing that, that, that the Antichrist, remember all of this stuff we're looking at, the Antichrist is going to have the solution for it. So the red horse is coming in, there's going to be war, people will be fighting with each other, and he's going to come in and he's going to solve it. And he's going to take care of it. And he's going to make everybody love each other and get along with each other. And, and it's On going. a national level, but the people among, will still be fighting amongst themselves. I mean, look at the riots and stuff that we've had all year. It's going to be, it'll be total chaos. It Everywhere. Will. And I think the whole entire tribulation will have some level of chaos at wherever you go. But you're not going to you're not going to have a situation where you have everybody getting along. The whole world is not just going to fall in line. For one thing, there's going to be believers, people becoming believers throughout the tribulation period. I do I do see that and believe that's true. Uh, well, I know it's true, but uh, which we'll talk about when we get to that point, as we will see that. But when it all comes back around, again, you're dealing with a, a scene, a situation where, um, what, what's the word, these things must happen like this. These things must take place. There has to be wars and fights. There has to be the famines we're going to look at in a second. There has to be all these things in order to have, 
In order to have a solution, you have to have a problem. In order for the Antichrist to be the solution, there has to be trouble. And the trouble is <coughs> the trouble is judgment on this world. Now here's the thing, don't, don't lose sight of this. These are judgments against this sinful, messed up world. That's what we're dealing with, that's what we're getting here. These seals that are being broken, the trumpets, the bowls, all of this stuff is God's judgment on this world. And God will use the same way he used Nebuchadnezzar and have the same way he used Herod and other evil people and other, other evil uh, people over, over the course of history. He's going to use the Antichrist the same way to accomplish his purpose in the end. That's, that's what it comes back to. Okay. Um, all right, anybody else? Any other thoughts there? Okay. okay. So, now, so now as we go forward, we, we, we look here at the, the next horse, the third seal, the rider on the black horse. The rider on the black horse. Let me get here. Okay. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. And so I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not, ha do not harm the oil and the wine. All right. So now we're getting into now we're getting into the needs of the people. This is again what what are we what are we dealing with? We have problems that have to have solutions, and this problem here is famine. This problem here is a food shortage that is going to be devastating to the world. It's going to cause all kinds of problems. You can actually find this in Jeremiah. You can find this in Lamentations as well. They talked about it after after a war, uh, World War One. There was food shortage after all these. I mean, about anywhere you have issues like this, um, inflation is a big issue. All of these things bring a scarcity of food. They bring difficulties for people. Um, again, inflation rises, and so you can't afford anything. So, so in, in to kind of kind of bring this around, what he says here. So, so the penny is a biblical reference to equivalent of a person's wages for one day. A denarius actually is the, the phrase that used in the New King James. Uh, so you've got a denarius. A denarius is one day's wages, and when you take this, take this into the actual, what they're talking about here, three measures of barley are about a pint, a minimum daily sustenance diet. So this is what you're, this is what you're going to eat, is about a pint of barley is, is what, they're, what, what they're dealing with here. So when it's, this comes down to it, you'll have to work your entire day, and all the money that you'll make, will that'll buy you one, one day's worth of food. And that, that again, that, that's, what <coughs> excuse me, that's what causes the issue here. So you're dealing with a food shortage, you're dealing with issues and circumstances that are beyond our own, the people's control, not our control, we won't be here, but beyond people's control, and they are dealing with this, and they are starving to death, or they're running into trouble. Again, let me, let's, let's kind of jump forward a little bit. If you're starving to death, and your kids are starving, and they say, well, if you'll take this little mark here, if you'll just take this and swear your allegiance to, to the Antichrist, well, they don't call him the Antichrist, by the way, uh, to whatever his name is, then you got all the groceries you'll ever want. All you got to do is go in there and scan your hand or your forehead or however that's going to work, and here's all the here's here's all the food you can eat. Just have at it. Just like the children of Israel had the manna come down from heaven. Here's your manna from your manna from the Antichrist. And again, we're not he won't be called that. But anyway, so you got that now. The question this this troubled me for a long time till I till I actually learned how to study the Bible and started to read it. Do not harm the oil and the wine. Oil and wine will be representative of, of uh, luxuries. There will be no problem. So what, what does that mean? The rich people who enjoy the oil and the wine, they'll have it. There'll be no problem to them. It's no issue to them whatsoever. This is not going to bother folks that got money. They don't care. This, this isn't going to hurt them a bit. They'll be fine. They're not, they're not worried little, I, at all. The rich folks, they're not injured. They're not troubled. They don't have any, any issue here whatsoever. They're, uh, they're, they're okay. But everybody else, the common people, they're going to starve. They're going to be in misery. They're going to be in trouble. And they're going to be trying to figure out what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. And again, that takes us up to whenever the, the mark of the beast starts being handed out, they're going to be lined up to get it. They can't wait to get it. They're excited to get it. Because several things that that's going to accomplish, and again, I'm getting ahead of myself, I don't mean to, but the mark of the beast will be, will be one, how you, how you live. You'll have to have that to buy and sell and do whatever you're doing. That will be also, I'm, I, I believe it will be a, a um, 
worship, if you will, or a swearing allegiance to the Antichrist, whoever he is, or you know, the, all that kind of stuff is going to be, it, it's not just going to be so you can go get groceries. It's going to be, do you swear your allegiance to, fill in the blank, whatever his name is. And if you do, then here's your mark, and if you don't, then you're out. It'll be everything about you, and if you want to travel, you'll have to have it. If whatever you're doing, you'll have to have it. You'll have to you'll have to have this in order to to live in this world, to to function in this world, and to do anything in this world, you'll have to have the mark. Uh, without the mark, you will be you'll be black market. You'll have to go in the ground, which they cover all that. If you if you're interested, if you never read them, I, I think they're interesting. I think the way that it's done, the way that the Hay and Jenkins did. The Left Behind series, I think it's well done. I think it, there's some, some great possibilities there. And like we say about stuff like this, when it comes all happens, it may not even be close to like that. Then again, there may be people that, that, that don't make it, that, that get left behind, literally left behind, and they, may, <laughs> they might use the Left Behind book and say, well, this is, what, this is what they said was coming next, and they start seeing. And it may be something real close to that because they did use Scripture to to uh, to get to you know get where they're going with that. So, all right. So fourth horse. Let's get it, let's get our fourth horse. And then we have any discussion you want to have. Certainly, um, fourth horse. The the pale horse. The pale horse. So, again, another. I, I want to go back back up here just a little bit. I want to say about these horses. These are terrifying creatures. This isn't like like going out to our house. If you ever go out Linden Road, there's the guy out there on the on the the, the west side of the, of Linden Road. He's got anywhere from a half a dozen to a dozen or sometimes more horses out there they're beautiful we i like horses i i don't like to ride them because i don't trust them because i because i just uh they're crazy and they can be but anyway but those they're beautiful they're wonderful creatures but i'm telling you when this world experiences these four horses it will be terrifying it will be it will be nightmarish okay i really think it's uh, in this fourth one especially so now then Sorry, I, I put that up on the screen, and now you, that's all you see, and I'm still talking. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth li living creature saying, Come up and see, or come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, and to kill with the sword with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. Okay, so this horse is corpse-like signifying death this pale this isn't was it pale rider was that who, who was in pale rider was that eastwood i don't know who it was but i'm not i'm not up on my westerns like you think it would be i enjoy those movies i just hadn't ever seen a lot of them but anyway sorry about that i spent off sometimes so you're used to that but now but but during the first 21 months of the tribulation period between war famine inflation one fourth of this world will die one fourth of what's left so you've already you've already raptured the church, however many hopefully billions that'll be, we can hope. Trust for a great revival here, millions certainly, maybe billion. There might be a billion, uh, we hope, but um, whatever that number is, those are gone. And then now you had a fourth of what's left that has died from war, from famine, from inflation, from whatever. Something that something has happened to these people and they have died. So. Somewhere in the neighborhood of a billion and a half to two billion people will be dead by the by the end of 21 months, by the end of less than two years. That is, that's incredible. And you're talking about hunger. There's a part of this that says the wild beasts of the earth will will have a hand in this. Um, this now, some people think that's symbolic. That may mean the beast in as far as governments. I don't know. I I, I don't. I really don't know for sure. Daniel talks about. These kingdoms of being beasts, and, and you deal with some of that. But uh, we live in a world. I mentioned Australia a while ago. We live in a world that's got some critters that can kill you. So whether it's actual beasts or whether it's governments, doesn't matter. Bottom line is, somewhere between one to two billion people will be dead in less than two years because of all the things that are going on, all these judgments that are coming on the earth. And so, as a result of all of this, anybody who hasn't come around. Now again, think about this. You've got the Antichrist has shown up, and you've got these wars. There will be hundreds of millions, billions at that point that will say, "Here's our hero." Then you've got the famine, and he's going to solve that. He's going to get everybody fed, everybody taken care of. He's our hero. 
and then you're going to have this pale horse come in and he's going to bring death on on people well, again will this be what is he how's he going to do this is it going to be a uh, pandemic is it is, what, what's he going to do how's he going to accomplish this don't know uh don't know exactly and i'm not it doesn't matter how bottom line he's bringing death and and as he brings that death and brings that that um that that part of what he what was going to happen during the tribulation period again if it's a pandemic and the antichrist solves it and gets the vaccine or gets brings a cure or even in a spiritual way start laying hands on people and healing them what, what better what better way to usher him as being messiah than for him to heal people i'm telling you all of these things are tremendous possibilities because he is going to be well that's good he will be all things to all people Paul talks about that. I don't want to be all things, all things to all people that I might win some. And if he comes in and whatever your need is, I mean, if we went around the room right now, just what's here in the room, and even I, I go with the, the folks that are watching online too. We welcome to remind you we're glad you're with us. If you have a comment, please comment it. But again, think about it. If we go around the room right now, we've got an infant that is that's probably hungry. Well, and okay, there's there's two, four, six, eight, right, twelve people that's probably hungry. All right, let's do it. But no, um, but you know, you've got, there's hunger, there is aches and pains, there is, um, you're tired, there is whatever, you know, you've got a bill that you're trying to figure out how to pay, honestly, whatever, whatever the scenario may be, if somebody walks in the back door right now and satisfies the baby, satisfies your hunger, makes your legs stop hurting, makes it, you know, I'm talking about me, when I say that, my, my right, my right knee's starting to give me more trouble and it's a, it's the strangest difference ever been. It's not unto- it's not intolerable. It's just different. But anyway, so I, you know, he takes care of that, and, and he takes care, of, and you know, whatever it is, nobody nobody's glasses anymore. I mean, you name it, whatever it may be. When he gets through, we're like, I like this guy. This guy, this is this is somebody special. And the way it's portrayed, like I said, the way it's portrayed, whatever whatever this world needs, he will have. Whatever you name it, whatever this world needs, the Antichrist will have. And when this, when the the horse comes in bringing war, he'll bring peace. Whenever their folks are starving to death, he's going to feed them. Whenever people are dying from whatever they're dying from, he's going to do something. Raise his hands and like Moses at the, at the the, uh, yeah Moses, Moses at the Red Sea. Sometimes I catch myself like, well maybe it's Abraham or maybe it's Noah was on the ark and Abraham no, but. And the gates shall not prevail. All right, praise the Lord. But, uh, but you've got all these things that are going on, and whatever comes, whatever it is, he's going to step up and say, here, let me fix it. And he will be. He will claim at some point, and I think this is, I think this is 100% accurate. He will claim at some point to be Messiah. That will be his, that will be the big lie. We're talking about the big lie right now, the big lie will be he's messiah because they'll point to scripture and say well you remember when he healed this and he did that and he fed he's going to take and he'll sit down with a, ba- with a basket of bread and he'll start breaking off bread and giving to people just like jesus did he'll walk on water just like jesus did he'll raise the dead just like jesus did he's going to do everything that jesus did why because he's a counterfeit and a counterfeit looks like the real thing and if you don't know better You'll take the counterfeit to be the real thing. And I'm telling you, there, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's incredible to think about this kind of stuff. And again, the good news is we won't have to deal with it. If, we, if we're right with Jesus, we won't be here. Uh, so it's, it's not a thing. It's not a thing to us. But thoughts or questions before we wrap up tonight? He's going to be a political or spiritual and a social leader for the earth, but not for the heavenly. Absolutely, and you hear Sharon now, and he will be a earthly Messiah where Jesus' kingdom is universal, and he will he will he will solve a lot of problems on this earth, but Jesus, of course, will solve uh, the world's problems. So, uh, or, or universal problems. Excuse me, the way I put that. So, all right, anybody else? Any other thoughts or questions before we wrap up? All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Bless us, God, tonight as we go our way. Again, we pray for our friends and family and, and those uh, across the country that are dealing with uh, unusual weather for where they are. 
Lord, for those of us that are dealing with weather, the usual weather, weather where we are with the cold and the snow and the other issues that, that we're having here and across, uh, across our region as well. Speak your blessing, Lord God, and providence and power and protection, Lord. Bless the first responders and those that, that work with the power companies that are trying to make sure everything is done and, and keep people uh, warm and safe. And we pray your blessing, God, over this church and church family. Let your light shine among us, through us, and for us. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you folks. Thanks for watching and being with us tonight. And thank you all.